In a charm to excite love, a grey-eyed maiden is besought to rise from a spring and help a darling wife. She is to fetch water from the spring of love that the wife may wash her baby, her little bullfinch, and make it very beautiful so as to admire it by everyone. In a charm to fortify water and give it virtue, a slender-fingered maiden is invoked to rise from a spring or from the gravel and to fetch energetic, serviceable water from Jordan in which Christ was baptized. Lastly, a maiden from a dell, from the humid herd, or a warm maiden from a spring, blue socks, from a swamp, a swarthy girl with a shaved head and skinless teeth, was holding a copper box containing a golden comb. One of the teeth of the comb fell out, and from it sprang a splint oak, the head of which seized the sky, and its branches held the clouds. The mist and fog maidens differ considerably from their sisters of the air. The mist and fog maiden and the air maiden, Autaretar, is asked to sift down mist and fog to prevent an enemy seeing either to attack or to escape. The maid of mist and fog is invited to clip wool from a rock and make a shirt of mist, a copper cloak, which an exorcist can wear day and night as a protection against sorcerers. With epithets of a leaf bud, she bone yarn, dressed in a fine linen, she is invoked to scatter fog from a sieve before the white animals of the forest. When they approach a hunter so that he may have time to get his bow ready. Fire is the offspring of Hohenes, of the Panutars, fire's daughter, of Lemmes of the Lentohatars, who gave birth to her child in the sea. She could not hold or touch it, and from that she knew it must be fire. Hohenes of the Panutars is invoked with Nunnus, mentioned above to bring frost and ice to freeze an exorcist and allow him to handle the fire without hurt. Panutar, the best of girls, is asked to come and quench a fire by putting it into her clothes and keeping it safe there. An anonymous made of fire is desired to extinguish fire and repair Panu's work. She is to bring frost, ice and iron held to apply upon the burns. If that is not enough, she is to poke a heifer's height into fire's mouth or throw it over Panu's head. Thank you so much for listening. I have a new course slash lecture series on mermaids in Finnish mythology. People don't always know that I keep courses in Finnish folklore, so I shall try to mention them more often. You can find my courses at fairychamber.gumroad.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my name there is at fairychamberart. Have a great day. Bye.